What's going on everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're for a new Madden 24 rebuild where we are rebuilding one of the top community requests that I've seen on social media here in the comments. And that is the Pittsburgh Steelers. We have one of my favorite players in the NFL. I was pounding the draft table harder than almost anybody for this man to be a legitimate wide receiver one in the NFL. He is awesome. He's incredible. Get this man a face scan. I think he is an emerging superstar talent. As long as, you know, I do think there's a little bit of like Antonio Brown potential with a George Pickens. There is a reason why he fell a little bit in the draft, but on field talent, very, very good. Mike Tomlin has a success with these types of players. And I think that with the combination of Kenny two gloves, Kenny Pickett under center, make the Pittsburgh Steelers a really, really interesting squad. And really, I remember a thing that hung me up last year is like, no matter what we did, Kenny Pickett just like wouldn't develop in Madden 23. So I welcome the challenge of seeing if we can develop Kenny Pickett in Madden 24. Now he's an older player. He's a 25 year old going into his second season as opposed to, you know, most rookie players where they're 22 going into their second season, 23 going into their second season. So especially as it relates to the quarterback position, you are losing some of those developmental years, but all it's going to take is for us to get him off that star dev. And I think he is going to be like, we strapped a rocket to him go off and be a really really good player for us uh, outside of that though in the we got Najee Harris it's nice good little power back there solid runner and I think he's just been kind of the result of not a great offensive line from the Pittsburgh Steelers so still a lot of potential there kind of surprised he still has a superstar dev to be honest with you but we are not going to be complaining in that department we will absolutely utilize that same with Deontay Johnson still pulling a superstar dev is that just you know, yeah, kind of. Also, you know, if he had a star, I don't know how many people would be complaining. But for this rebuild, that, you throw in the veteran coming in in, in Robinson. You have a freak athlete in Calvin Austin as a, as a depth player. You have Pat Fryermuth, who I think is one of the most underrated. I think Pat Fryermuth and Cole Komet are like two of the most underrated tight ends in the NFL. Really, really good skill sets. And I think we still have yet to see their best football in the league. So I think he's going to develop into a big-time player for us today. I mean, you look at the skill position spots here. I don't think a lot of work needs to be done for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, the offensive line has been shambolic, to say the least. Uh, as you can see, our squad here. Um, yeah, I mean, we got right tackle. We got to figure that out. James Daniels, right guard, 80, not too bad. At center, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a little bit of inside hockey trading, if you will, for Isaac Sayamalu. This is what we're doing for the rebuild. Probably not how they're going to go in real life, but Isaac Sayamalu played center and guard for the Philadelphia Eagles. So I think to maximize what we have on the offensive line right now, which is Kevin Dodson with a dev trait, we're going to slide Isaac Sayamalu from left guard to center. He does take a one point overall hit, but I mean, he's 29 years old. He's pretty much at his ceiling anyways. And it's not like Cole is going to be our long-term center or anything like that. Like there's still a big question mark there at the center of our line. A long, long ways since when we had like the Pouncy just dominating in the inside there. Uh, but at least that kind of gets us better at two different positions. And we have big expectations here for Broderick Jones to develop into a franchise tackle. 73 with a hidden dev, the first round pick out of Georgia. I thought that was a very smart move. I thought the Pittsburgh Steelers have an outstanding draft class. That's another reason why I want to rebuild the Steelers. Not only do I like Kenny Pickett, love George Pickens, but I think they did an outstanding job in the 2023 NFL draft. Broderick Jones was a sensational pick. I think Darnell Washington, I don't know how much we're gonna utilize him. Thought that was just, that's a fun pick to get. It's 6'7", 264. He's pretty much a tackle playing tight end, but also can catch tight end weapon. Um, I mean, again, maybe something goes sour in contract negotiations with Pat Fryermuth, and he might be able to get an opportunity. So beyond that, we have the defense. Defense has always been consistent. The Steelers never have a bad defense. Maybe they don't always have a great defense, but they never have a bad one. Uh, looking at the front three here, we got Larry Ogunjobi. I'm going to go with the rookie Keanu Benton there at defensive tackle. And we got Cam Hayward at defensive end. And obviously Cam Hayward, one of the best in the business. Very consistent, very reliable player, I can say. Um, just from Madden 24 standpoint, I've seen him in the sim be very good. I've seen him get double-digit sacks really until he retires. So I'm hoping that is going to be the case here today as we need him to be great while we, we, you know, we're not going to be able to rush and find his successor right away. We have so many other needs and holes, but as long as he can play two seasons, maybe get three out of them, that is going to be awesome. Rest of the front seven, we got Alex Highsmith, really underrated pass rusher. 
We got Quan Alexander, Cole Holcomb, middle linebacker. A little bit of change in the guard here for the middle linebackers for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They kind of, you know, Devin Bush. Uh, was it Miles Jack there for like they have been they have been struggling? Cole Holcomb solid was a tackle machine for the Commanders. You got Herbig here. That's an interesting one. He's kind of like a hybrid do it all linebacker. He'll be a guy that would be interested to see. Maybe we can make him shift. He's never going to play ahead of Highsmith or TJ Watt. So I wonder what happens to his rating if we shift him to middle linebacker. Is that going to help him? Is that going to hurt him? Is it going to be in indifferent? I think it's going to be indifferent because it's kind of. You know, was there was the report on him and he's not even making the top four so i mean that kind of goes to show you um but right now at the linebacker room really the best player on the pittsburgh steelers offense or defense i'm going to try to change that and hopefully it'll be george pickens by the time this video ends but as it stands right now tj watt awesome awesome player uh the most disrespected player in the league when it comes to people ranking and making lists and stuff like that i think he is an s tier pass rusher i'm not saying he's the best i'm not saying like yeah tj watt is unquestionably better than miles garrett or bosa or micah parsons or anything but he's like in that firmly in that category uh even just for the sheer amount of production that he that he's able to turn up it's undeniable he's a monster and i think he's going to absolutely thrive on this defense let's hope now i always have my concerns with a 3-4 defense in the sim because the sack numbers are always butt cheeks but maybe he's not having someone like tj watt and cam hayward is going to change that the safety room we have minka fitzpatrick awesome as always and at the other spot, we have Casey and Keanu Neal. I'm going to go maybe with a little bit of Florida Gator bias here. And we'll give Keanu Neal the start at strong safety. The secondary room, Levi Wallace. We got Pat Pete, the veteran. Pat Pete pulled in an 85 overall. Okay. But the big name of the secondary is Joey Porter Jr. The, uh, a lot of people thought he was going to be a first-round pick. Fellow Pittsburgh Steelers in the second round. Legacy player. Obviously, his dad was a great player for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I believe he was a coach for the Steelers. Maybe he still is. Maybe I'm off on that one. I know he was a coach at some point. I feel like he was with the Cardinals. Either way, Joey Porter Jr., a really nice height, weight, speed type corner. 6'2", 193, 90 speed, 94 acceleration, 89 jumping. And he is definitely going to be a long-term play for us in the secondary. So from top to bottom, lots of talent here on the Pittsburgh Steelers squad. But also, we're going to need some things to go our way. We're going to need the development of Kenny Pickett to continue for me to see this team win a Super Bowl at the end of five years. But I think we can easily do it. And we're going to, along the way, make George Pickens into a stud. Now, before we get any further, I do need to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor. Do you smell out the air? College football is back, fellas. So grab your favorite team's jersey and head to the lot for some tailgating. Today, I am very excited to announce that I am partnering with DraftKings Sportsbook to bring you all an offer you do not want to miss. New customers will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly after betting just $5 on any wager. Download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code C4. New customers who bet just $5 on any wager will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. Stay on the action and use your $200 in bonus bets on DraftKings parlays. Combine multiple bets together for a shot at an even bigger payout. If sports betting is not available yet in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on the action with DraftKings daily fantasy offerings across all sports. So download the DraftKings app now. You customers use promo code C4 and just bet $5 on any wager and you will get $200 back in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code C4 only at DraftKings. Do it live. 8,000 points. Win or lose. we go right there incompletion no chance lockdown right here give me that gold man joey porter jr coming for the gold oh i hate this one oh i hate that one not fast enough who's that going i'm going to go against deontay johnson really good route runner Pretty good speed as well. Kind of cooking us here late. Might not. We might have just lost the gold. Psych! We're back in it. We need what seven, eight thousand? I think we need one stop. We get a stop here. We get a gold medal. If we lose, it's there. We go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Next up, it's George Pickett's time.
I'm going strictly in this one with a game plan. Someone told me in the comments when I do wide receiver battle, just go for the end zone every time because you can stack touchdowns. Okay, I'm going to do that. All right, well, so we're just going to run streaks the whole time. That has been your guys' suggestion. I assume, like, you're probably not going to get gold, but that just might be an easy way to get silver. And if you get silver, you get the one skill point. That's all it's about here but at this point is skill points. But you'd like to get gold. Uh, I'll give credit to the DB right there. Now, I don't know if me missing one. We're going to do this live. I'm going to experiment for all of you. Oh, that's going to be perfect, beautiful, hot spot. That makes up for the missile that we just ran right by. Why is that so deep? Eddie Pinky, come on, man. I put that in the 500. Does that count as 500? Yes! Why didn't... I should have... Oh, see, look, he got me here. I'm going to come back and just get... Get a multiply right there. If he, DB gets a win, I think you got to bail out. But if you get a little bit of separation... Oh, okay. You guys are on to something. Who says the comment section is just... The most deplorable people that exist on the internet. Oh, man, we would have got gold there, too. A little bit better ball from Katie. I'll take the silver, though. That's how you do that drill. I guess this is kind of cool. We have a mentor rookie situation. I was kind of hoping it was going to be Pat Pete wanting to work with Joey Porter Jr. It's Fryermuth, who's for sure not uh, a big-time guy. But we're going to focus on that long-term development. Last year, this usually could get you a dev trait if they play well. And we lost the first preseason game, 24-14, against the Bucks. We're going to speak with Pat Frymuth here, veteran of, like, two seasons, <laughs> three seasons in the NFL, but taking Darnell Washington under his wing and getting him a dev trade. Cool. Not the best start. I mean, I'm thinking in my head, like, this year, upcoming for the Steelers, like, what is their win ceiling? And I'm thinking, like, 8 to 10? I mean, we're not off the mark for 8 to 10, but... Is what it is, but week seven against the Rams, we have a breakout defensive line scenario. Hopefully it's Keanu Benton, and it is because he is our normal dev rookie that is starting right away at D-tackle. So it would be huge if we can get him a dev trade. Very manageable, very attainable, great role. Probably one of our easiest games to play the Rams and the Cardinals this season. Don't want to be the first win on the Rams schedule. Also want the opportunity to go to 500 on the season with the dev trade for Keanu Benton, which would go a long way the upside of our defensive line because right now don't really know who's going to be our guys and we kick the shit out of the rams 35 7 weekly award i'm gonna guess Najee harris it's kenny pickett and pat p kenny pickett 255 three touchdowns two interceptions one of them being a pick six for old man patrick peterson and let's see if we get the breakout for keanu benton which would be gigantic and we do Star Dev on that defensive line. Let's go. With that, we get two upgrade points. He's already a scheme fit as a run stuffer. Morale is taking a little bit of a hit. Hopefully that will change after this week. But he is up to a 74 star. What did he get him? Third round? Second round? Third round? Somewhere in that range. Already looking to be an absolute steal. I will pull it back here. Midway point of year number one. We're five and four in the hunt for the AFC. Maybe not the title, but uh as relation to the north I, I think we can definitely continue to push for a wild card spot which again i think that's in line where the Steelers should be game above 500 nice win here over the green bay packers 17 14 in week 10 in which we saw alex highsmith with a sack and interception get defensive player of the week he's been actually pretty solid that might be a second of the year which is surprising uh we do have a breakout linebacker we'll do that in just one second because we're going to use this to talk about some contracts. I have no idea, honestly, what the Pittsburgh Steelers salary cap is looking like. Holy sh What? Why do they have zero? Your, your team's on a rookie quarter... Uh, all right, I guess... Um, I guess we're not signing anybody. If I had to pick, it would be Dotson because he's 26 with the dev trade on the offensive line. Maybe we'll get a little bit of influx of cash at the end of the year that we can try to re-sign one of these guys holy that is that is not a lot of space anyways got to break out the linebacker i'm gonna guess it's highsmith because he is coming off a defensive player of the uh 
of the week. And he's only on a star dev. Super star dev is attainable in the sim, I think. It's, it's probably 70-30 that he misses it. But I will take that over or not. We have a big time opportunity over the bottom to other Cleveland Browns. This could definitely help shape up the division here. If you want to build um, some momentum. And psych, we lose. Do we at least get a silver lining of Highsmith with a dev trait? All right. It's all bad. All, all bad. We close out on a three-game win streak, including dumping 35 on the Ravens to tie the NFC North. Bengals had the tiebreaker, but man, I'm telling you right now, Kenny Pickett and Highsmith, the amount of player of the week, the amount of big-time performances I've seen from Kenny Pickett and Alex Highsmith, weird because it should be TJ Watt probably, uh, and I'm a little bit actually worried about what TJ Watt did this season, but I am thinking, look at this, man, top five offense, defense not the best, but like, I didn't think we were going to be messing around like this on the offense. Like, when we win, out of those 11 wins, most of those wins were 30 mops. And looking at the stats here, we have no one in any of the leading spots. That's fine, because I, I still think Kenny Pickett definitely went over 30 tutties. I'm going to guess 36, 35, 39! Top five Kenny Pickett. That could be superstar. Only seven interceptions as well. That is big time. I've seen Kenny Pickett had some big seats. Pittsburgh's one of those, like, inconsistent teams. I've seen Kenny Pickett get like 35, 36, like around this. I've also seen Kenny Pickett get like 24. So it's all about maintaining the space. This is all well and good, but this is year one of a rebuild, five-year rebuild. What are you going to be looking like playing year four, year five? Are year four, year five, are you going to be struggling to get 30? Because I don't care if you have one big breakout year and you get everyone excited, you just got to let everyone hopes down. So that is an outstanding start for Kenny Pickett. Top five in yards and in touchdowns, number four, which should bode well for him. Uh, to go up potential dev trade. He's sitting now as a set. I think he started as a 74. 74 star. Gets four overall points throughout the year. Uh, that is awesome for him. Great start. Uh, Najee Harris was also sensational. 1,500 yards. 19 touchdowns for the power back. Gotta be another guy that's a candidate to go up a dev trade. He is superstar, so that could potentially be an X factor. We have George Pickens. 78 catches. We got 1,300 yards, 11 tutties, 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns for Deontay Johnson, who was our slot wide receiver. So they eat almost 1,000 yards for Pat Frymouth. Like those are, again, another three chances at dev traits. If those guys got it, wouldn't be insane. Wouldn't be, you know, uh, completely ridiculous. We have uh, now on the defense, I'm going to be very worried about what happens with. TJ Watt, we have Highsmith here, 116 tackle. Now, he he was our, our sub-linebacker. It was him and Cole Holcomb, so his tackles are off the chain. But uh, just a real hybrid linebacker. Five TFLs, eight sacks for Highsmith, over 100 for Cole Holcomb. On the sacks front, 12 from Cam Hayward, only nine from TJ Watt. A little bit low. It's fine. He can, he can only go up. I would say this is like, what is the worst sim stat line I can see from TJ Watt without hitting the panic button. And I would say like nine sacks, eight, nine sacks. You know, you get, you, you know, minimum, you want to be looking for, you don't want to get 20 plus in the TFL sack department. And that's like your minimum, minimum 20 plus. And, and we did break that threshold, but we need to see a little bit more to TJ Watt. Might lose his dev trait. There might be a chance he loses X Factor. I don't know. Pat Pete, old man Pat Pete with the mentor tag, uh, taking Joey Porter on his wing. Led the team with five picks, three picks for the rookie Joey Porter Jr whose hidden dev got unveiled as a star. But with that stat line, might be good enough to put him into a defensive rookie of the year conversation, which always gives you a shot at potentially getting another dev trade. Let's take a look at the yearly awards. MVP goes to Dak Prescott. Kenny Pickett making the top five. It's respectable. Definitely respectable. Offensive player of the year goes to Patrick Mahomes. Deontay Johnson at number three. Najee Harris at six. Kenny Pickett at ten. Defensive player of the year goes to Quinnen Williams. We have Highsmith at 5, Cam Hayward at 8. Offensive rookie, there goes to C.J. Stroud. Defensive rookie of the year, Joey Porter loses out to Will Anderson Jr. And I, I'm never going to be too salty about that one because Will Anderson Jr. has a star dev. He should have a superstar dev every day of the week. Hopefully he gets it off of that. Uh, Keanu Benton coming in at number 5. Kenny Pickett, runner-up behind Patrick Mahomes for quarterback of the year. Probably not going to win a lot of these awards with Burrow and Patty. Those are two of the most overpowered players in Madden 24. But he's hanging there, man. I will take that. Uh, running back of the year. What? Nice here is 19 touchdowns, 1,500 yards, coming in fourth. Again, much like Kenny Pickett's going to be going up against Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes. You know, three of the most overpowered running backs are in the AFC. And Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, and JT. Wide receiver goes to Deontay Johnson. Love seeing that. That could be an X-Factor. He's on a superstar dev. Um, 
Pat Pete third in DB of the year. So, I mean, hey, cross the board, really successful season because it's looking like, ah, well, will we, won't we kind of get hot near the end of the season and be able to make a push and a play for the playoffs. That's exactly what we're able to do. Now, the team that we are playing in the playoffs, I mean, there's no risk. Everyone is assuming that we lose. We have nothing to lose. So if we lose, it's expected. If we win, it's a nice little upset. Great way to start it. And we get absolutely smoked. And that's just what happens when you run into the Chiefs. The Falcons defeat the Chiefs. 35-30 in the Super Bowl. But the moment that we are, are waiting for, the depth traits. It's year one. Depth traits are very important. Here's one and two. That's where you want to see that development. So that when come year five, your team is as good as it possibly can be. If you want to try to keep the guys in building. And this is like a wet dream for Steeler fans. Kenny Pickett goes from star to superstar. Najee Harris goes from superstar to X-Factor. Deontay Johnson goes from superstar to X-Factor. George Pickens goes from star to superstar. Pat Fryermuth goes from star to superstar. All of the pivotal key players on our offense went up dev trade. Braxton Jones was hit a dev rookie. It is just a star, so we want to see that offensive line continue to develop. We're going to roll in the draft with right tackle being definitely one of the positions we want to target uh, as soon as we can. In the draft defensively well first thing is pat pete retired on five picks i was like where is pat pete did he go up dev nope he retired um no other dev traits up or down mink was superstar lost his dev trait which kind of sucks but we could have lost both his and tj watt and i would have said understandable and luckily tj watt held on to his maybe surprising highsmith didn't go up to superstar but given how many great roles we got on the offensive side of the ball i'm not going to be too picky this season now we did get a little bit of scratch here scratch people will say that um so we're gonna pay the fifth year option of Najee Harris obviously it's a running back that's what you do you don't pay them and I do want to try to re-sign Kevin Dotson just because that's one less position we have to worry about on the offensive line so we're gonna offer him a three-year deal get him to sign on the dotted line but with that we are now going to have to sit out free agency which I mean, let's be honest free agency sucks in Madden 24 sucks as in it's not exciting some people like that like I, I made that like a a complaint of mine it's like yeah free agency kind of boring and people are like i like it boring versus having you know what we had in madden 23 where sometimes you see like joe burrow justin herbert lamar jackson like on the same freaking class something like that so i get it different strokes different folks but for rebuilds the more exciting the better and in madden 24 most draft you know free agency classes are pretty boring but when you have 1.6 million dollars doesn't have to you don't have to worry about it man we're gonna shift all of our focus towards the 2024 nfl draft all right, we got pick 23 in the draft. Now, this is, I, I mean, from a rebuild standpoint, Pittsburgh, it's pretty good because you're not really backed into a hole as far as what position you have to draft because there's a lot of a lot of work, a lot of TLC that could be done. I think on the offense, uh, tackle could get the best tackle available. We have a set of two here that look pretty nice. Uh, we have Nolan Ford, double A and a B. We don't know his run block. Combine, good athlete. Maybe not the bench press that you would love to see. Or that would be confident in making that selection that he would be a dev trait because usually high bench, uh, you, you feel good about the dev trait. It's kind of same look and play here in Tanner Sweeney. Great athlete. And I would be confident that either one of those guys could hop in and play at the right tackle spot. We also have Bailey here, who is the athlete of the bunch. Double A, 6'5", 339. I'm an athlete. Powerhouse of the bunch. Uh, but he also is a pretty damn good athlete. Elite change of direction, elite strength. I'm, I'm a sucker for the athletes, the guys that, that ball out at the combine, double A. So it's a little bit more of a risk because I don't know for sure like how that's all going to break out, but looks pretty solid. We have a couple D tackles that we've scouted here. Clint, Craig, not really what I'm looking for, but Rashard Woodson. This could be one of the bigger freaks. 6'1", 360. We know what these guys are about. 6'1", though. This guy is a bowling ball. A power move, B tackle with 44 reps. Like 44, 45, 46 is like the highest you can get. If you've seen more, let me know in the comments. Probably still won't believe you. But then you look at the combine man first in the three cone drill, elite acceleration, elite acceleration, and 44 reps. This would allow us to shift um, the D tackle we got right now. I'm blanking on his name right now. The Keanu Benton, he'd go to one of the defensive end spots, and then we'd have Woodson be our nose tackle. So that would kind of get two spots potentially better long term. Uh, there's some good linebackers in this class as well. I think I more so want to look at the second round. they grab a linebacker to bring some competition inside uh, uh, Cole Holcomb. Corners also look nice, dude. There are, I mean, right now, corner is like one of the most overpowered positions I've seen just with like stock draft classes. But look at this. Like we got a second, third round pick. That's a first, second round talent. We got a 6'4 corner, Marco Tut. We, do, we need to replace Pat Pete. 6'4, three Bs and a C. 
and he runs a 4-3. So there's a lot of tough decisions to be made here. Let me just make sure. We're going to keep this in, man. We're going to drag it on. Let me just make sure, because I'd say if, if moving Benton makes sense, I'm very, very intrigued by a nose tackle that is popping, like a clear, gigantic nose tackle that's built really weirdly with Elite Acceleration. So we have Ogunjobi. We could shift Benton over to take over Ogunjobi. Ogunjobi's only on, what is he, 29, 30, last year of his contract. So, like, he needs to be replaced. I think that's what we're going to do. Because that is a fun-looking nose tackle. And then we have extra scouting on, on the offensive tackles. I mean, that would be the trade-off, is, is missing out on a tackle. But we still have Dan Moore, who can he could start again. Like, he was a starting right tackle this year, made the playoffs with him. So, it wasn't like he was a complete liability. So, I mean, a lot of good options here. I love having the options, but I'm going to be a sucker just for, like, whatever this guy's build is, man. Don't just, please don't just, don't be normal death. Don't be normal, Dev. Have the hidden Dev. And we just got a human bowling ball. 6'1", 360 with 85 acceleration, 99 strength. I knew this was going to be a good one. I knew this is the right call. So going into the second round, Dion Flanagan, linebacker that we had scouted. Double A, B, C zone's not, not the best, but the, the combine is also actually not incredible, not bad. That might need to be our pick. Looking at the corners that we we do have Cordell Dickerson. We do need to replace. We have more information on him. If his combine's better, we probably go 5'11, 205. Has elite acceleration, straight line speed, not the best. The three cone, 20 yard shuttle. Mm. It's a tough call because I know corner's strong. I know like we can get a really good corner next year if we want to like get one early. Hmm. Hmm. Also, there's there's a pretty good center here, Randy Toon, Isaac Samalu. No, no spring chicken. That's pretty good looking center. Three A's. Like he's probably he's probably BPA for us right now. Hmm. I'll go corner just because we have it scouted. Please have a dev trait. Don't. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, shit. The center's still there. Third round. Glad I didn't make that pick. Easy layup for us. Three A's. No one else wants them. I'll take them. That's three dev traits in a row. So, on paper, felt like a really good draft class. Three hidden dev players. All felt good about the selections there. Rest of the draft, nothing too crazy. But, Toon, 74 hidden dev center. We got 74 hidden dev on Cordell Dickerson, who is... Not necessarily a replacement for Pat Pete, but he's going to be a guy that we're looking to to step up and potentially start this year. But our big first round pick, I've never seen a D-tackle built like this. So hopefully works out well. 99 strength, 83 power move, 85 acceleration. That's uh, Casey Hampton 2.0 for uh, some of you old heads out there, Steeler fans. I always like seeing the two players that I pass on. One was Amari Bailey, the offensive tackle. He looked pretty good. Also, like a just gigantic human being, 6'5", 330. What is his dev trait? Just get the dev traits and get out of here. Okay. Superstar offensive lineman. Okay. Uh, that's very annoying. Very, very annoying. And we had Tut the corner. 6'4", height, weight, speed. He's 77. If he's a superstar, I'm going to start sweating a little bit because we probably didn't make the right call. And he is... Only a star dev. Good rating though, 77. So the pressure is on. We pass on a superstar tackle and a 77 corner who would have been one of the top players in the highest overall player in the draft class. Oh man, that Deion Flanagan was a linebacker we're looking at too. He's 76. Okay, decisions were made this draft, man. We need that D tackle to pan out. He needs to be a stud. All right, so we have a harsh reality falling out of the draft. I can't play. We're $8 million in the red right now. Why is Mitchell Trubisky getting this much money? We are now we're going to have to look at the ugly history. It's like a... I don't, I don't know if it's sexist. It's like having a wife that just like spends like crazy. No idea where the money's coming from. Maybe that's a little personal for myself as well. My God, where, where are these... Okay, so Allen Robinson is going to go. 
much as he's solid, we like that's the easiest right there. We're now under salary cap, and that literally will allow Calvin Austin, very explosive athlete, get a little bit more opportunities. Like, where else is this money hemorrhaging from? Okay, so we have Dan Moore Jr. We're gonna slide him officially over to right tackle. That is where he's gonna have an opportunity to continue to develop for at least another year until we have to look at the the draft class next season. Might replace him. Made it should have probably replaced him honestly, knowing that we passed on a superstar tackle. Um, like this guy, gone, Cole. There's like three million bucks we can save. Why do we? You know, that's a lot of money. Obviously, we kick the Amalu in the center. Um. Like a core for what is that contract? Herbig, what is that? Sammy, what? Okay, so there's just some terrible contracts. Larry Ogan Joby with a big time deal. Are they like senile? What are these? Um Okay. I mean, a lot of these contracts, I'm hoping that we can kind of just wait them out. Like, kick. I mean, Boswell is, has been a really good kicker for a minute there. But, man, we're good enough to start this season. Could be a lot more cuts in coming ahead of next offseason. I kind of want to see it. I know you guys kind of want to see it. Let's see it. All right, needs to be said, and it's known, it's getting fixed right now. The player models in draft classes are pretty not great right now. Like, not in a great spot, and we are... Kind of cheesing this drill, not doing the drill as intended, but we're just going to make sure we get these multipliers. It's all about getting the gold medal. But does this guy, for those of you that know, like, what would you guess? If I looked at that guy, I'd say this guy here is like 6'1". Like, this looks like an outside linebacker. 6'1", 240. Now he's 6'1". Got that right. 360. He's 360 pounds. Casey Hampton... It's disgusting right now. That, like, where's the, where's the where's the weight? Is he holding it? Does he have uh, got a piece on him or something? <laughs> something like what? How are we missing what looks to be a hundred pounds? Get off the block. He's doing it all right. Top of this drill though, on pace for gold. But I mean, like, this wasn't an issue last year. Like, how is this a new issue? What what happened in the development cycle of Madden twenty four? For like somehow the player models to look this off. And like it is something that... Come on. Get that last multiplier. Get out the way. Yeah, fuck it. See, we still get gold. Still got gold. But I mean, come on. Why? Like what? Who messes up the ones and zeros in the code to just have all body types messed up? We were able to go modify make him a little bit more believable. But even then, man, he holds and wears 359 really well. Center Pittsburgh Steelers teams going into year two. Well, looks pretty good. Got all the dev trade increases from last year, so I'm excited to see and hope that these guys can play at a very similar level and maintain these dev trades. I don't want to see them all gain at year one, and then year two, Kenny Pickett falls off a cliff, Johnson loses it, Pickens loses it, Fryer, you know, we don't, you don't want step backwards at this point. You never need them in a rebuild. On the defense, uh, we're changing up just a little bit here. Uh, corner room is we're going with youth. We're going Joey Porter Jr. We're going Dickerson, uh, who was our second round pick. We got Corey Trice. Might not have the best rating, but I, I think there's definitely a player. This is Pink Slips. He, he's a Pink Slip candidate. Six foot three, 90 speed, 91 acceleration, 92 agility, 85 jump. So he's a pretty good athlete. Honestly, couldn't even maybe some decent tackling attributes. Could move him to safety potentially, but little concern about our depth at corner. At least I, I feel confident with our two outside starters. We have Woodson at nose tackle. We're going to have Keanu Ben and Cam Hayward at the two defensive end spots. We're going to go Highsmith, Watt, Holcomb, and Roberts. So, I mean, still have some holes. We're going to finish this team. We have a complete project after one season. But I still feel very confident that this is a playoff caliber team, especially on the offensive side of the ball. We're at the midway point of year two, and we're 5-2. and two, Tied with the Bengals, the top of the division. Still plenty of time for this to go belly up. But we're going to be cautiously optimistic. Now, let's look at the contracts. Last year, we had no salary. This year... A lot more, which is great because we have a lot of players that I would like to to resign. Obviously, we'll pick up Kenny Pickett's fifth year option uh, in the off season. Outside of that, we got Cam Hayward. Let's ensure he retires as a Pittsburgh Steeler. Get him on a one year deal. We have Pat Fryermuth. Might as well actually start that at this end. Uh, we'll get him on a four year deal. Lock him in for the remainder of this rebuild. Deontay Johnson, who has thrived here year one, absolutely get him on a three year deal. 
We have James Daniels on the offensive line. Now, there's not a lot of interest, so I think we're going to have to go player-friendly. We'll see if we can get him on a four-year 40 mil, which we do. Lock it in there at right guard. And, yeah, we will let Dan Moore walk, which means we are for sure are going to have to land a tackle either in free agency or the draft. But, speaking of... Uh, actually, I think I kicked Siamalo. I just say Amalo to right tackle. Just because I wanted to get that young center... And it's Sam Alu plays everyone on the offensive line. That's where you're getting Pittsburgh Steelers fans from an Eagle fan. Sam Alu can play guard at a really high level, and he's kind of all right at center and tackle. So I kicked him at the tackle just so we could allow Toon to start at center. His dev trade unlocked as a start, but we had on the defensive side, Woodson, the monster, is superstar, which is great. We were a little bit worried because we passed on a superstar tackle, but Woodson it does pop as a superstar, but... And I would say that, like, that's a good thing if you're chasing dev traits is follow your nose. When you see something that looks a little off for the better. You know, he, he didn't have the best stats, didn't have the best letter grades across the board. When I saw 6'1", 259 with S-tier strength, like, he, I knew he was going to have 97, 98, 99 strength. And then he had elite acceleration. Like, those are combinations that you don't usually see. Those are the players you want to try to target because they usually have a dev trait. And then on top of that... Dickerson, the corner that just fell to us. He was just the best corner remaining. Ah, oh, man, we got to replace Pat Pete. He's superstar as well. Cordell Dickerson out of, where is he from? Utah State. That's great. That's a that's a nice hit. I don't know if we've got two superstars in one draft. Finish year two with a divisional title. 12-5. and five. Very competitive. I had to see, man, the Bengals. They must, they had to lose a bunch. They were very, very good. I, I was shocked. I was like, man, did they lose like five, six in a row? They only lost two in a row, but it was still good enough. Uh, for us, we were more consistent to get that divisional title. Two seed in the AFC. Looking at our stats this year, though, a little bit of a drop off from Kenny Pickett. Um, again, though, like this probably still meets the threshold of like, okay, if this is your, if we saw your ceiling 39 touchdowns a year ago, is 32 going to be your floor? Because I can work with that. 4,600 yards, 32 touchdowns for Kenny Pickett. We had a lot more rushing touchdowns. Jalen Warren had 11 vultures in there. Uh, 1,400 yards, 9 touchdowns for Najee Harris. Kenny Pickett also, I mean, pretty good scrambling for a not real scrambling quarterback, even though one of his most iconic plays is a scramble in college. Uh, George Pickett crushes it again. 88 catches, 1,400 yards, and 12 touchdowns. We have 100, uh, just over 1,000 here for Deontay Johnson. 800 and this is something that always stands out to me right here. Look at this 95 yard touchdown for Pat Fryermuth. That is pretty badass. Defensively, no one over 100 tackles. Three guys all kind of lined up nicely there, though. Sacks front, 16. There we go. Got TJ Watt going. Uh, 10 and a half from Cam Hayward. And on the interceptions front, definitely missing Pat Pete's turnovers from a year ago. Lexi and Corey Trice get kind of thrown into the starting lineup, sub 70 overall, with a respectable season. Nine PBUs, two interceptions. We will take that. Look at a look at the yearly awards here. MVP goes to Joe Burrow. We have Kenny Pickett way down there at the number eight spot. Offensive player of the year, Burrow. Defense goes to Vaughn Miller. TJ Watt, runner up. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Claxton. Defensive rookie of the year. Damn, man. I, mean, I guess I guess didn't really have crazy stats or anything like that. I don't even think we're going to have any award winners. Oh, there we go. Actually, TJ Watt, best linebacker. It's already on an X Factor, so not that we can hope for a dev trade, but. Really happy with that numbers there across the board. Man, we're a big play offense. Big, big play. Week 18, we put it on the Baltimore Ravens. And we had a bunch of, like, you know, Kenny Pickett. You know, he doesn't have great arm talent. He could throw the damn rock, man. We had a couple long touchdowns this season. Big play offense. Going against a very big play offense in the Miami Dolphins. And we get humbled. 21-14. They shut us down. Damn. Damn. Year two finishes with a Eagles Bills Super. That'd be an awesome game. Even though the result, not great. Buffalo wins the Super Bowl. Take a look at our lineup on the offensive side of the ball as it relates to dev traits. I, you know, I don't really know what to expect. Deontay Johnson keeps his X Factor, and George Pickens joins the X Factor club. I told you, George Pickens was going to go off in this rebuild. And so far, that is the case. We do have year three coming up. Year three is historically not a great year in rebuilds but we will see we got a great start on the dev traits on the defensive side outside of dickerson and woodson two rookies with superstars no one up or down so i guess that's kind of a win first piece of business this offseason is to pick up the fifth year option on kenny pickett who is developing as good as we could have hoped for in this rebuild 
We're gonna dip our toes a little bit into free agency. At least we're gonna try to to try and solve a right tackle issue. Jedrick Wills, formerly of the Browns, has hit the open market, and we were able to sign and land him. And he is going to switch over to the right hand side, which I mean won't affect his rating or anything like that. But now we can shift all of our focus towards the draft for our few remaining holes. I think we could make it if there's like a BPA for a wide receiver. Look for some competition there with Calvin Austin. I think we should be definitely looking at corner, getting a third corner option alongside Joey Porter Jr. and Dickinson. Maybe middle linebacker as well, but at least we got the tackle spot figured out here right now. A pick 24 in the first round. BPA might very well be another defensive lineman. This guy here couldn't be any different than the D-tackle we drafted last year. Hoskins would be a defensive end in our scheme. So this would be our Cam Hayward replacement. Two Bs, double As, A-tackle, A-power, B and SB block set. Looks incredibly well-rounded. The combine skills are pretty good, all things considered. No elite or excellence, which kind of hurt him a little bit. But he does look like a pretty safe player. Might not have a dev trait, but... We could definitely come back to it, or we could look at corner. There's literally no linebackers in this draft. Like I did say, I wanted a middle linebacker. Raheem Harris could be an option. We need the B pursuit, B tackle right now. But we look at corners. We can still use a third corner. That is where we scouted some of our players here. I didn't scout Clark. I thought he was going to be the cutoff. I guess I should have done my total due diligence and seen uh, the mock drafts. But also, I was a little put off by his athleticism. Uh, wasn't exactly what we we're looking for. We also have two corners. We have D'Angelo Watts, who's a first-round caliber corner. Three Bs and a C. Combine, pretty good. Elite change of direction. Elite jumping with a 39, almost 40-inch vertical. Looks pretty good. And a ski fit. Or we have Derek Fitzsimmons. First-round talent is A-man coverage, six-foot-four. B-zone. Like, that, like, that's a, that's like, this is, when we come back talking about unique players. That's a unique skill set here for Fitzsimmons. Uh, combine, nothing special. But, like, what I'm thinking is because there's still a couple corners here, I think we grab that D tackle and then we be aggressive and trade up in the second round to grab one of them corners. So we're getting Hoskins, who I have no expectation for him to hit the ground running. Don't know where he's going to fit in our lineup, but that's my plan right now, making this pick. This is our Cam Hayward successor because Cam Hayward probably is going to retire before the end of this rebuild, if not this upcoming season. Damn, I literally just sim through every pick, assuming I would have to trade up at some point. Both of our corners are still on the board at pick 24, which I was almost hoping it wouldn't come down to this because now it's all on us to make the right call. Three Bs and a C, two Cs, an A and a B, one, six, four. They're both scheme fits. Let me get one more look. This, this is where we're going to really test ourselves. I feel like this guy's going to be the better because he has the elite traits. Maybe for once we're not a size... We'll go with this guy. Maybe for once we're not a size queen. Oh, normal dev. Pause. Well, now we're just going to have to go look, see what that 6'4". I mean, do I try to get them both? No, we don't need three corners. One middle linebacker. None really existed early on. Raheem Harris, we talked about in the opening. Had the double B, and he has the combine profile. Now this is being compared against primarily like edge rushers, but elite acceleration, agility, change of direction, speed. Worst case, this guy's going to be an awesome special teamer. So a look at our draft recap. Wasn't as plentiful with the dev traits for our top tier picks, but feel feel pretty happy with it. All things good. Got 70 wide receiver late. Harris, no dev trait, but still 70. You know, he can develop. Watts, 76 normal. Hoskins, 73 with the dev trait. Now, he is going to be a defensive end. Got to look at it right now. We might as well make the switch. I'll make him uh, left. Go left end for right now. What the? It might drop down to like a 71. Let's say the same 73, which is pretty good. But we need to go see uh, what the other corner was. Fitzsimmons, I think it was his name. Just because. So we got a 76 corner. Watt, 76. Fitzsimmons went a couple picks later. He is 77. We got to just always be size queen. You guys go for the size, man. Only a star, I guess not that big of a miss, but hmm, I hate getting that one wrong. Year three for the Pittsburgh Steel. I just I just feel like they're flirting with. I don't it might not be this year. It might not ever happen. Maybe I'm gonna be wrong. I just feel like we're due for like a Kenny Pickett 21 touchdown season where it's just like, all right, dev trade gone, dev trade gone, dev trade gone. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe that's just uh, I don't even want to think like that, man. So far, we've won the Super Bowl in every rebuild. We've been able to find a way. So maybe we won't have any sort of regrets because the offense has been prolific. It's been great, been better than I expected. 
Very happy for that. Defense, now, haven't been able to replace all the holes. Pause. But, like, I mean, you know, going BPA, we added some depth on the defensive line for sure. And, you know, we got the best linebacker, I think, available. He's going to have an opportunity to start alongside Cole Holcomb. But, like, you know, we have a hole at strong safety. Richardson's got to play 70. Nothing too special. You know what? We could also bump Trice up. Actually, you know what? I'll put Corey Trice there. I, I did like his tackling ability as a corner. But the corner room, we got Watts. Again, hopefully he plays himself into maybe defensive rookie of the year conversation. We can look at a dev trait there. Uh, Joey Porter Jr., Dickerson, I feel good about everybody else in this secondary. But, you know, by no means a complete team. I would always make the argument that's been the thing that's been challenging in Madden 24 rebuilds, at least on my channel, is that, like, we haven't really made the super teams that we saw in Madden 23. I think some of that is definitely due to the talent pool that's available in free agency, and there's a lot more stress in Madden 24 on building, drafting, and developing your squad that way. But this is a really, really strong offense, and I think as long as the defense can hold up and we have star talent, we have studs on the defense, this should definitely be a, another chance at a playoff run. God damn, man. Week one, we win. It's a good win, right? But I didn't know. Nashi Harris went nuclear. 173 yards rushing, three rushing touchdowns, 28 through the air, a fourth total touchdown on the day. God damn. Undefeated after seven weeks, six and zero into the bye. Coming up, we have a tough matchup here against the Ravens, but very, very happy with how we've been playing. Look at that—the number one offense in the NFL, number one defense in the NFL. Everything's good. So the passing yards, but our rushing yards are up. So as long as it's a collective effort on the offense, I am not going to be worried too, too much. Now let's look at contracts. This is going to be the Kenny Pickett year. Uh, we got George Pickens and Kenny Pickett. These guys are going to command top dollar, which they should. But we'll get George Pickens locked in. We have Najee Harris. You don't pay running backs. I pay running backs. As a former running back myself, that's what you do, man. I show them respect. I show love. Uh, we have TJ Watt. We're going to get him on a four-year deal. Okay. Actually, you know, we kick the Kenny Pickett's contracts next year. Okay. So we kick that can down the road. We got Hayward. He wants a one-year deal, retire as a Steely. Even though we drafted his successor, still a great player. But unfortunately, with the remaining salary cap, you know, we are going to be in the market. We got upgraded safety. Corey Trice just filling in this year. I did just set my focus scouting for national to the safety room. So hopefully we can find one there. Uh, we are going to need a wide receiver three and a new middle linebacker. Lost to the Ravens, but then we beat the undefeated Bengals 35-24. We get a breakout defensive back. Don't be If it's Corey Trice, that'd be hilarious. Okay, it's Joey Porter Jr. He is on his start. I'm looking to make the jump to superstar against the Green Bay Packers. It's attainable. Won't be super easy, but not like the Packers are a prolific passing team, I don't think. So let's see if we can get Joey Porter Jr., one of the bigger name rookies Pittsburgh Steelers have had in a minute, a dev trade. We win the game. Very, very slim victory, but it still counts. 27 to 26. And Joey Porter Jr., ah, I'll take the win, though. Finish our third regular season, kind of similar to how we finished last year. We win at the NFC North. This time we are the one seed in the NFL, number two offense in the NFL, number two defense in the NFL, highlighted by the number one rushing defense. Also have $42 million of salary cap space, which is looking great. Kenny Pickett's touchdowns aren't crazy, but fucking Dak, man. Oh, man, Dak is so stupid. Ah, hopefully that gets fixed. Uh, but Kenny Pickett, third. Makes it for passing yards. I will take that. Touchdowns, though, is lowest number. 27-4. But the only time I will never get on the sim, get on my player for touchdowns in the quarterback discussion is when my running back has 25. When I have over 30 total rushing touchdowns, it was just the way the script makers made this season. Najee Harris was incredible. MVP candidate for sure. 1,700 yards. 25 touchdowns also. So he's over 2,000 yards. 30 touchdowns. Give him the fucking MVP right now. Friar was solid. Austin was solid. 1,005 for Johnson. 12 and 6 for Pickens. I'm, I'm just happy Pickens is getting his at this point. I'm more I'm more concerned about a George Pickens development than I am Kenny Pickett, honestly, which is probably shouldn't be the case, but it is what it is. Harris, the rookie, 118 tackles, 10 TFL, sack and a half. Might have played himself in a defensive rookie of the year conversation, which would be huge because he's on that normal dev. Uh, now or never, TJ Watt is actually simming like TJ Watt now, which is incredible. What happened year one? He had nine sacks. This year, 20 TFLs, 19 and a half sacks. Incredible. 16 sacks came Hayward, 12 from Highsmith. We got six picks, Joey Porter Jr. Everything in this rebuild outside of winning a Super Bowl early has been great. And it almost, you know, it makes you forget Dak just threw 47 touchdowns, right? 
makes you forget that. Um, looking at the AFC, Najee Harris does win Offensive Player of the Year. TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year. Oh, third and fourth. All right, no cheesy dev traits. Najee Harris, Running Back of the Year. TJ Watt, Linebacker of the Year. Joey Porter Jr., that, that could be a dev. That would be great. Superstar, get some abilities going there for Joey Porter Jr. On the back end of the defense. But here in year three, we're able to kick our feet up because we have earned and deserved the first round buy. And what was a juggernaut of division? The Ravens and the Bengals, very good. Uh, 12 and 13 wins, respectively. And we actually get to play the Bengals right now. We swept them in the regular season. The Ravens beat us twice. We were 0-2 against the Ravens, 2-0 against the Bengals. So... Clearly, we're going to lose this game. If you beat a team twice in the regular season, clearly the third time you play in the playoffs, you're going to lose. And there we go. So we have yet to taste playoff victory. And I'm getting a little worried as we go into year four. There's no stopping the Chiefs juggernaut. They just dismantle the Carolina Panthers here in the Super Bowl 45-14. And that's always going to be the thing, man. Not just my any video. Your video. Your personal collection of playing this game. You're in the AFC. You are going to have to find a way to beat the Chiefs. Uh, luckily for Dev Traits, we only had one regression, which was Firemuth going from superstar down to a star. So I will I'm happy with that. That's that's not too bad at all. On the defensive side, we had oh, Yep. There's a reason why we drafted Hoskins as Hayward. Cam Hayward has retired. Mika Fitzpatrick up to superstar. Joey Porter Jr. up to superstar, which is nice. Our secondary is looking as good as it's ever been. We get ourselves a safety, we get ourselves a middle linebacker. We're going to be laughing, but the retirement of Cam Hayward. Knew it was coming. Was Maybe that's why we had that extra salary cap. It honestly, makes a lot more sense right now. Trubisky also retires. Who gives a shit? But Cam Hayward, 15 great years. That's a legend right there. Now, here is where it's fun signing free agents, right? It's always something that's kind of fun. Jalen Ramsey is really interested in joining the Pittsburgh Steelers. However, if we sign him, I'm probably going to move him to safety. I don't know if I want to keep him at corner. I might keep him at corner. I might have to bump someone else. So I know we're not going to have the top bid. It's between us and him returning. There. And he get the Jets! Him and Sauce, that should be illegal. We scouted safeties this year. Focus scouted them. And we uncovered this man, Ben Young. Top five talent. Four Bs, so I would have drafted him... Anyways, if he fell to me, but now knowing that he's a top five talent, the question now comes in, how much do we want to trade up for him? Athletically, lines up with what we're looking for. So we need to go look at the mock draft, see who is projected to take him. He's definitely not falling, I don't think, to a playoff team. But if we can get him outside the top 10, that would be pretty, he's going five. All right, we'll call Detroit, see what they want for pick five. Actually, Detroit doesn't have pick five, it's Seattle. I will call Seattle. Seattle either wants Minka Fitzpatrick or basically our first and second round pick this year and next year in the context of this rebuild. And I'm making that every day. You find a top five guy at a position that you need on a team that doesn't have a lot of holes, you gotta go get him. Now, is this guy, I don't have a lot of experience drafting safeties early, especially this early. This guy needs to be like Derwin James, X-Factor, Superstar Minimum, making a trade up like this. But you feel pretty confident with the top five true talent. Ben Young, welcome to Pittsburgh. And you should be filthy next to Minka Fitzpatrick. So no pressure whatsoever, but draft recap. I hope 80, 79 hidden dev. Okay. It's not bad. 90 speed, 80 zone, 84 hit power, 79 pursuit, 81, 91 acceleration, 74 catching. Looks pretty good. Now that dev trade. Better not be a star depth. Because we're just destroyed with depth right now, we're going to sign Debo. De Actually, you know what? De I mean, he's kind of... Is that Troy Anderson down here? We're going to sign Troy freaking Anderson, pink slip legend. Come play linebacker for us this year. Year four of the Steelers, and now it's like less about talking about how good our team is and worries about regression and all that stuff. Our team's proven to be a great regular season team. It's been the postseason. Haven't got a fucking win I, I hope this is it, man. We add Young. Hype is off the chart for the secondary. If he is superstar between him, Minka, Porter, and Dickerson, we might have one of the best secondary so far in any of our rebuilds. Maybe a little weak and soft in the middle here. Front three. Definitely the loss of Cam Hayward is going to hurt. 
but still very optimistic that we're going to play at a very high level, compete for a divisional title third in a row. But we need some postseason success. Going into year four with no playoff wins is not good enough. Best for a team this good. But anyway, point of year four of the 2026 season, six and one. Looking great. Passing offense. Yards kind of suck. Offense, you know, right now it's the defense that's winning, which is odd because we have a 91 offense, but kind of is what it is. Maybe we'll finish stronger down the stretch. Taking a look at our contracts, though. This is Kenny Pickett year, and yep, I'll give you $150 million. You've been awesome. Even though the playoff success, I believe in you. We have Minka Fitzpatrick. We want to keep our secondary that now finally looks complete together. So we got to pay Minka. We got to pay uh, Joey Porter Jr. We'll definitely come back for Minka. We'll give Joey Porter Jr. I mean, this is actually a really reasonable contract. So I'll, I'll juice it up there a little bit. And we'll get him to sign. I'm not worried about Minka, especially because there's an interest there. We have Broderick Jones, first round pick. We'll give him a player-friendly deal. Luckily, we have a lot of cap. This could have been... Uh, very depressing if we weren't managing our money and by managing our money I mean if free agency wasn't shit and Jalen Ramsey wasn't an ass we probably wouldn't be able to afford all these guys when we wanted to but as it stands right now uh, we'll let look we might be able to upgrade guard we have money we have money that we could splash a little bit so we might be able to upgrade guard there over Dodson Washington is a fun little project he's just been pretty much a fullback for us uh, and we'll make sure we can get this contract with Minka over the line next week we finished year four with a nice week 18 shootout because it has to be a shootout because 47 touchdowns for Dak. Uh, we beat Dallas and we go 12 and 5. We lost our stranglehold over the division though. Cincinnati able to win it, which ends our streak at two. That doesn't matter. I will trade all of that for a freaking playoff win. Uh, so looking at the stats here for our squad, I love seeing TJ Watt top of the sacks right there with 23. That's pretty good, right? But unfortunately, take a look at the stats. Kenny Pickett, man. What? Like, where's the 30 bombs? I mean, again, everything correlates with, like, Najee Harris is getting 10 more, well, 8-ish eight, eight more rushing touchdowns than he did when Kenny Pickett was getting 30-plus tutties. So, like, the touchdowns aren't... We're not losing those touchdowns, but, I mean, I would like to see Kenny Pickett get back over 30. What do you have first year? Like, 30, 39, 38, 37? What did he have year one? Why was it such an anomaly? That's what I want to know. Like, at what point did we shift from these two years to just 24, 20, you know, why are we just running the football now? Right? And not not super stoked that this is the most picks he's thrown in a minute. Not a great year, honestly, for Kenny Pickett. Like, he's losing his dev trick, potentially. Najee Harris, incredible. George Pickett still getting his 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns. But, you know what? Another thing is, like, the long touchdowns. I remember one year we had, like, two, three guys with, like, 70... Like, explosive plays. Not really. Outside of pick is having, uh, you know, an 82. Everything else is kind of down, man. I think might be figuring out at least why. But why? Why is it like that? Um, tackles are what they are. TJ Watt, S tier. Ridiculous season. 13 TFLs, 23 sacks. Three picks for Dickerson. Three picks for Fitzpatrick. Rear is the safety. What's the dev trade? Don't be star. Don't be star. Don't be star. Fuck me, man. We traded... Even I make mistakes. Now, you know what? He can redeem himself if he gets defensive rookie of the year and goes up super shy. And we're not chasing really dev traits anymore. Dev traits are stuff you focus on first three years of the rebuild. Four and five, you're kind of coasting with what you got. Uh, Mahomes wins the MVP there. Josh Jacobs, TJ Watt. We got... Oh, my God, man. Barely even makes the short list. Like, that's a sympathy. He made the... Barely made it. So, really, if your name wasn't TJ Watt, you didn't have a great year. And I... Man, come on, Kenny. Like, this is Madden 23 Kenny Pickett. Like, struggles to get 30. Why did we get... Like, the team's only got better. We got X-Factor after X-Factor. Well, if we could trade that for... If I even told me we could have a better rushing attack and start getting some playoff wins, I will take it. There we go. We get our first playoff victory. It took us four freaking years. But we get it 35-7 over the Jacksonville Jaguars. I got to get a little sneak, a little peek here. How did that happen? Kenny Pickett, well, let's be honest, it probably wasn't Kenny Pickett. It was probably Najee Harris running it a whole bunch. Kenny Pickett, decent. I mean, the three picks by Trevor Lawrence, that is going to be huge. But it was, um, you know, a rushing attack by us. Something known as a Shaq Gary making a play. But we had some interceptions. Harris, Watts, and Dickerson 
that is the big difference in that matchup. The turnovers, 35-7. And now we have the Bengals. Team that, honestly, we've been, it's been heavyweight blows every time we fought the Bengals. Because it's a fight. It's not a game. It's a fight. I, I think we're ahead. I think we have a better win-loss in this rebuild. And we are staring our first rebuild of Madden 24 that might not win a Super Bowl. Everything's going into a year five Super Bowl or bust. And I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I, think, I don't think you can look much further than the fact that, like, why is Kenny Pickett not throwing the football to our X-Factor wide receivers as much? And we're running the ball. Like, what? Why? That's not the only thing. The sacks. Remember year one? TJ Watt, like, got nine sacks. And then just out of the blue started getting 20. Like, what is going on, dude? Like, since day one, we are Steelers Steelers. I didn't know in the description of these playbooks. It's like, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. We close out year four with the Bengals in our faces. Just the slam dunk, shack attack, Super Bowl win. To rub it in even more. Because we would have beat the Vikings. We got to kick shit out of the Vikings. Uh, look at our squad. Kenny Pickett doesn't lose his depth rate. Deontay Johnson does. So we are going to be down in X Factor. More so from an ability standpoint. On the defensive side of the ball. No dev traits down, and Minka Fitzpatrick gains an X factor. So we find ourselves, you know, we, we beef up the middle linebacking room there. I, I think, uh, you know, we should we're we're gonna be as good as any other team year five. But pressure is on. You never want to be the first team that can't get me a Super Bowl. Desperate times call for desperate measures. We'll try. I'm not going to go with like an audacious custom bid, but we'll try. We will try. Is that what's going to take to get some consistency out of this offense? We're also going to look. Matt Milano come in, be starting middle linebacker. Dodson, we let walk, is also the best left guard available because that's just kind of how it happens. But these are the moves that we are making. These are what we're trying to do so we can avoid our first non-Super Bowl winning rebuild here in Madden 24. Did put this draft. We have pick three, like just for fun. No idea who's... I didn't even... Scout. I'm gonna let's see if we can find someone good here. It's a little bit of a challenge. Blind pick a good player that we could potentially utilize. Mm. Well, that center is probably pretty good. Might just have to take the layup, take the offensive lineman. Maybe we'll add a little bit more challenge if we could find someone down here. It looks pretty juicy, but we have the clock running under a minute. Yikes. That's probably okay, but this is, we're down in UDFAs. Run stuffing linebacker, don't need one. Got Matt Milano. Bet you there's going to be some corners here. BA for corner. Actually, not really much. All right. To redeem myself, we're going to make likely a pretty decent pick here in the third round to beef up the interior of the offensive line. Hey, take a look at the draft recap. Not bad for a blind pick. I'll take a 74 hidden dev every day of the week. A nice little RB3 as well out of Akron. Year five, this is it. No pressure, but also a lot of pressure on Getty Pickett and the offense to put it all together. We welcome Tyreek Hill. Is that going to be the difference maker with Tyreek and Pickett's on the outside? Deontay Johnson in the slot. Will that get Kenny Pickett to play his best football? We'll find out. Defensively, uh, feel pretty good. We're going to add Matt Milano here, obviously, to the linebacking core. Uh, he will be our linebacker one with Harris. We have a very good secondary. I'd like to say complete secondary, at least in terms of starters. Our pass rush is nice. Even with TJ Watt starting to regress now, he's down to, well, 96, but he's base 93. Still can get the job done. No pressure, but also all the freaking pressure, Kenny Pickett. Figure it out, bruh. You need bigger gloves, you need looser gloves, you need tighter gloves. Let me know. Get me those 30 touchdown a year gloves. While also having 20 tutties for Najee Harris. And then you're five, 15 and two. I like that we just completely stopped throwing the football for some reason. And barely average, barely over two. I don't know if I've ever seen it that low. We're gonna have like, 2,000 yards passing. Actually, okay, it wasn't that bad. 3,500 yards, 29 touchdowns, three picks. 
I, again, just can't explain the fall off from Kenny Pickett. But that's not a bad year at all. You're not going to throw a lot of touchdowns. Just don't throw a lot of interceptions. And, again, we've been pretty close to that 30-ish rushing touchdowns a season. So, you're like, you know, at the end of the day, offense is good. Kenny Pickett is leading a good offense. Defensively, it's also been kind of hit or miss. You know what hasn't been, though? George freaking Pickens, man. This guy has been a reliable 1,000-yard receiver on an offense that doesn't pass the football particularly well. But there was an idea that after signing Tyreek Hill, he would elevate the room. And I don't know. Maybe it's just one of those things, man. Just really, really weird. Like, look at the longs, dude. They go from having 70 to a long of 35. Drops off the face of a cliff. Defensively, uh, Milano and Harris on the team in tackles. We had, again, first rebuild. What First year of this rebuild. What, TJ uh, Watt had nine sacks? Since then, it's been breaking the record every year. So I, I think one full year in with the Pittsburgh Steelers, I could say the most inconsistent playbook we've had. This, what are we, three, four rebuilds in to Madden 24. Uh, ben Young, the former top draft pick that we traded multiple picks for it's very underwhelmed that he was just a star dev but i mean i guess he was drafted so late in this rebuild dev trade didn't really matter we nice for him to have abilities but we were never really going to see the ceiling of his development just because he's only going to be here for two three seasons so three interceptions is pretty good and you can always rely on the base rate i know sometimes i get a little too attached to players having to have a dev trade and you know it's not you don't always need it man even though i overvalue it you don't always need it lamar jackson wins the mvp tj watt wins defensive player of the year i believe that's the second or third time he has won that award here in this rebuild linebacker of the year as well and at least he's awesome because something i have seen just in other videos our steeler fans coming on my videos and saying is tj watt dead he's never up there for sacks he's been incredible in this rebuild i'm glad it was because i had the expectations that it was not going to be incredible and then i was going to have some sort of excuse about three four defenses sucking the sim well i think we might have found a good three four defense if you have the right pieces in place you have a right elite pass rusher i gotta remember that for future rebuilds with three four teams that, hey we we had a lot of success with the pittsburgh steelers being able to generate pressure after the quarterback uh really for both edges and when we had hayward we were getting really three guys that were getting really nice sack numbers uh in a three four so we kick off what is going to be one of the most important playoff runs that we've had in a minute because this is our staring down the barrel of potentially our first rebuild that does not win a Super Bowl. And that is, I like to get a good streak going, man. I feel like the record was like 10 or 12 back in like Madden 20 or something. Like that. I'd love to catch that. I'd love to eclipse that. And it all starts here against the 9-8 and eight Houston Texans. Look at the Texans. Pretty good. Top five offense. C.J. Stroud got them playing well. Defense, they have the number six rushing defense. So it's it's going to be, you know, if they can stop us running the football, things can get a little dicey. If not, we have the better team overall. But we have not had any real long-term success in the playoffs here. We have, what, one win this entire time? But look at that, 79. Wasn't pretty. But in that matchup, we got ourselves a player that's probably on the defensive side of the ball. It is... It is Matt Milano, the newcomer, the mercenary that we hired at linebacker. Not overly impressive, I guess. Eight tackles, one sack. Not crazy, but Lamar went off, and that's who we're seeing next. That's one of the biggest rivalries in the NFL. I say that biasly. I still think it's Eagles-Cowboys, but looking outside of the division, if you said, what is the biggest rivalry in the NFL that you can't say is the Eagles? I, I, I mean, I just think Pittsburgh Baltimore is up there. They're like in the S tier. They're in the top five, maybe even in the top three, if not first on, you know, given where the teams are at. Because when Pittsburgh's good, Baltimore's good, they can have the best 16 to 13 games you'll ever see. They're always close. They're always awesome. So for this one, for all the marbles to go to the Super Bowl, I really wish I had a lot of confidence in our 95 overall offense. It is a juggernaut. We are the best team in the NFL, but we haven't played like it consistently enough we are in the super bowl 24 8 we take down the baltimore ravens in a matchup where kyle hamilton got defensive play of the week but kenny pickett when he needed to 200 yards three passing touchdowns no turnovers gets his team in the super bowl actually before the super bowl we get to do something that i mean i hyped it at the beginning i want george pickett to be a 99 x factor did i actually say that i feel like i might have actually said that at the very beginning of the video right before the super bowl we accomplished that before we get to the Super Bowl, let's take a look at our squad, the stats that they've been able to accomplish to this point. Kenny Pickett lost his superstar dev, even though he's coming off the best game in his career. 
And I feel really good about how we built this squad. I mean, outside of Tyreek Hill, just for year five, all or nothingness. And I mean, we kept and developed that offense. And we had to deal with some sticky situations. We didn't have a lot of salary cap the first couple of years of this rebuild. Uh, we drafted particularly well on the defense. Defensive line was great. We hit on two superstars. Well, Dickerson was a superstar for most of this time. Uh, in the same draft class, Woodson was just a freak 6'1", 360 bowling ball with 80. What's his acceleration at right now? 87 acceleration. Truly just an absurd player. Guy's like a... Guy's absolutely built different. And looking at the career stats, Kenny Pickett, 22,000 yards passing, 160 touchdowns to 40 picks. Solid. Had some big years. Had some not so big years. But generally speaking, and if you're classifying wins as a quarterback stat, very successful. Won a lot of games with him. Uh, over 10,000 rushing yards and 100 touchdowns for Najee Harris, who was the most consistent player in this rebuild. Some really, really big time numbers there. Uh, receiving Deontay Johnson, 8,600 yards, 59 touchdowns, 7,000 yards, 49 touchdowns for George Pickens, who developed into the superstar that I wanted him to. Uh, and Frymouth, just shy of 500 catches, 5,000 yards, and 32 touchdowns. On the defensive side, we got Minka at 700 tackles, 600 for TJ Watt. Never really had that prolific linebacker, but is what it is because uh, we had TJ Watt because he also chipped in with 166 TFLs. 164 sacks, 64 and a half sacks from Highsmith. We got 27 picks from Minka Fitzpatrick. Joey Porter Jr. is really consistent as well in this rebuild. 14 interceptions for him. So all in all, great rebuild, even if we don't end up winning a Super Bowl and it does go down as the first L of the Madden 24 season. Still a really good rebuild. But in a matchup between one of the most accomplished franchises in the history of sports, let in, in definitely in football, the Pittsburgh Steelers with all the Super Bowls against literally one of the least successful franchises in the history of sports. It truly is a David versus Goliath in terms of franchise success. We need to make sure that continues here against Detroit. Let's go, baby. Where can we? Where's this stadium at? Can we guess? It's probably what Tampa Bay. We got Pickett. We got Lions. Got a new quarterback. But it's Kenny Pickett's time. Absolutely is Kenny Pickett's time. Now, because we're also staring down zero Super Bowls, I will hop in occasionally. Maybe more so if this game gets a little out of, out of control here. But we are trading touchdowns. We have a lead right now. I'm going to come in and convert this third down. That's what we're going to do. This will be my lone contribution to the first half. I hop in once in the first, once in the second. And right now, I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going for tidy. I'm not even, we don't even need to go tidy. I want first down. Good throw well, that was short to George Pickens, but because he's a 99 powerhouse of wide receiver, able to fight for the first down, and we're able to continue to go on that drive and punch it in with a touchdown. Defense has been solid, and that is huge. That third touchdown right before the end of the first half. Long drives by Detroit. They need to be scoring quickly, and every time I see him, there, there we go. Actually, speak of the devil, finally did score quickly, but it is looking like we are going to be able to kill this game off, kick the big field goal. They make it close in the end. But by the skin of our teeth, we are able to keep the streak alive here at Bat 24. The another Super Bowl trophy. Kenny Pickett was good enough. I think that's fair to say. I would he loved to be here and say Kenny Pickett fell to an X Factor. And when he threw for 30, 38, 39, whatever touchdowns, that was going to be the new norm. And he was going to put himself into that Mahomes, Burrow, Dak category here at Madden 24. And he just could not maintain that. Inconsistent offense, inconsistent defense, but we were all consistent in year five when we needed it to. And I'm very, very happy that I do not take the L yet. It lives to fight on for another rebuild. So for that, I ask you guys, hit up the comment section below. Let me know what team you want to see rebuilt next here in Madden 24. As always, likes and comments and subscribes are all very much appreciated. It helps the channel more than you guys know. And we're trying to make a real big go of it here in the Madden 24 season. We're very close to 165,000. And then we're on to 170. Then we're on to 180. Then we're on to, you know, the big one. The next big milestone, which will be awesome. But I honestly don't know if I'll ever hit that. But we're going to keep on trying our best. And I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, all that good stuff that I just said for the YouTube Marvel Jumble. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Love ya. Have a good one.